Good morning, good morning, it's Dr. Allison, and today we are talking about creating habits, staying consistent, what to do when you feel like you're not motivated, and that's what our April conversation has been about in our group all month, and so I hope you've been finding it a little bit helpful, so I wanted to share a little bit more tips and tricks that I do, maybe give you some new ideas, some motivation, some maybe a little bit of inspiration, and help you just keep continuing on with what you're doing, because I know that it's really hard to get started with uh, habit that you want to create and it's even harder to keep going so we're going to talk about why as well so before I jump in I'm going to skip ahead in my notes I really like the 1% rule um, by Tommy Baker it's a fantastic book um, you probably also like Atomic Habits I'm reading that one as well they're all very similar and what I like about what they talk about is that most people are going for these really really big goals and it's actually really hard to do that, right? And so up until maybe last year, I would set out my big goals. I'd do reminders, I'd do affirmations, and it'd just be always in my face. But they were so big that I got lost in the day-to-day. -day. And I would get really frustrated and give up and feel like quitting all the time. Things about my health and my weight and my workout and my business and finances and relationship, like all of it, right? And I just was so overwhelming. So when you read books like The Atomic Habit or The 1% Rule, the really cool thing that they focus on is what's that 1% thing that you can do today to keep moving yourself forward? So instead of looking at this huge goal going, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to make it. Breaking it down and going, all right, I'm going to do this one thing today. So what we do in our house is every Sunday or Monday morning, my husband and I have a weekly meeting and we go through our calendar for the week. We go through our most important things that we need to get done. We delegate to each other like, hey, honey, I still need you to hang those things up in our living room because I don't want to mess it up and I don't want to mess up the wall. I need you to do that. And he tells me what he needs me to do. And we collaborate and make a really, really big, well, it's not really big, but a big to-do list. So we're on the same page. And that starts us off in a great way for our week, our relationship, our marriage, our parenting, and it takes a lot of pressure off because we have so much more communication. Um, we also do things for social, our marriage, date night, what are we doing with the kids? We lay it all out on the table and really fit everything into our schedule. And then every morning I sit down and I do my three most important tasks. So I do three for my businesses and I do three for my personal life. And three, so that ends up being six, which isn't a lot because for the house it's like laundry, dishes, and then like cat litter, right? Like little things. Or, you know, for the personal size, like I have to make sure I work out today, I want to meditate, and I need to journal or you know something like that and then on the business side of course it's my business project so I used to have a sheet of things that I needed to do every single day and that sheet had about a hundred things on it to make sure that I was doing and it was great for the first week it was motivating I loved it and then the sixth or the second week I just felt like throwing it out and I did because it was just so much pressure. So really getting down to the three most important tasks that you can do today to get yourself into those habits helps so much. So I, a couple weeks ago when I started this again, right, because I've done this before, I had to redo it again. I, you know, like I said, I had workout, meditate, and something else for myself on there. And because I started doing those things every single day and they were my most important tasks, those are now not my most important tasks because they are my daily habits, so I don't even write them down. Um, and then after my three most important tasks, I still look at my to-do list because that way it helps keep me focused, it helps me understand where I'm headed, and it keeps me just moving forward. So when I start feeling like, wow, my health isn't changing or I'm not getting stronger or something, you know, like all of these things that I'm worried about, I know that every day I'm making progress for it. Um, so... My next on my list was, you know, those tiny habits, those that one percent rule, um, and stop stop stressing about the big goals. If you're not a big goal person, it's okay to step back and go, all right, I'm going to do these little things. It's helpful to know where you're headed, of course, right? So think about what that next step is for you. And some people want to jump way ahead and be like, all right, in ten years, this is this is my big audacious goal. And sometimes that's just too much. 
Maybe what's your goal for the end of the week, the end of the month, the end of the year, and really just start to focus in on smaller increments of time to not overwhelm yourself, to feel a little bit better about the progress that you're making because you're not going to go to the gym one time and lose 50 pounds. Honestly, you're not going to go to the gym for a month and lose 50 pounds. It takes work. It takes dedication. It takes a lot of different things like food and supplements and sleep and healthy hormones. So really focus in on those smaller things to take that pressure off of you. Okay. One of my mentors talks about not upsetting the, your tomorrow you, right? So doing the things today that your tomorrow you will thank you for, because I'm sure everyone's woken up and being like, man, I wish I would have done that yesterday. Really mad at my yesterday self. So what can you do today that your tomorrow self will thank you for that will already be done? Because a lot of times when we start these habits and then we fall off, and we forget what we were doing or how we were feeling, and we're like, yeah, I'll deal with it tomorrow, you're not going to want to deal with it tomorrow. So it also sets you back, right? So when you have one cheat day, right, sometimes that turns into cheat weekend, that turns into cheat week, cheat month, and then all of a sudden it's been a year, and you're like, holy cow, i got to get back on track. So really setting yourself up for success by um, doing the little things every single day, and knowing that eventually you're going to have to deal with these things, right? You're going to have to take care of yourself. So tomorrow you is going to do it if you do it today. So really your next day will mirror today. And that's good because whether you are exercising or eating healthy, it's going to mirror into tomorrow. Um, and that's how you keep this progress going is what you're going to do today. You're going to do tomorrow. Don't put it off any longer. And remember that the real work is incredibly boring. There is nothing sexy or exciting about meal prepping or working out every single day. And you know that first week, right, it feels good, you're excited to do it, and then that next week you're like, oh yeah, this again. Oh yeah, this again. Okay, I, I'm so sick of working out and eating healthy, I just want to take a break. But the hard work never stops. It's kind of like laundry dishes. This type of work is infinite. There's never a done button. As soon as you do the dishes, and I'm looking at mine right now, as soon as you do the dishes, you press go, the dishes are running, your kitchen is nice and clean. What happens? Your kids bring down like 15 cups and bowls that they had in their rooms. And you're like, no, I just got done doing the dishes. Same with laundry. As soon as you're done folding, everything's pristine. The basket fills back up again. So allow that to let yourself relax into your lifestyle and your goals and things that you have to do because there is no done with our world, with our life, with our health, with our relationships. So one thing that might help you overcome this is tracking your progress and making these to-do lists. There's nothing better, in my opinion, than crossing off your to-do list. So this morning, I did my journaling. I had my breakfast. I worked out. I took my supplements. I was like, I need to cross this off because I feel really good about doing this for me. So make that. Make your morning schedule. Cross things off. If that helps motivate you and keep you on track instead of going, oh yeah, I got to do this. Every day, get some scrap paper, get a journal, get a habit tracking journal. There's tons of them. They're at Michael's, they're at Target, they're at Walmart. You can make your own. You can get on Pinterest and look at um, journaling tracking sheets, habit tracking sheets, all of these things that would make it fun to keep you motivated and tracking your progress as well. So whether it's weight and you're just knocking off um, a check mark in a graph that you made or you're moving stones. Some people like to do marbles or something like that from jar to jar to lose weight. When every pound you lose, that's great. Or every day that you work out, you get to make a little check mark or color something in so that way you feel good when you look at that. And tracking your progress with numbers as well. So whether it's health and it's weight or maybe it's your blood sugar and you're taking that every single day trying to get that on track, 
your blood pressure you can track as well, um, your weights, your workout, how long did you work out for, are you getting stronger, are you feeling better, what's your energy levels like, how did you sleep? Sleep tracking is a great thing to do. So all of these things, right, lead in together because you're going to look at that, you're going to say, all right, here's my starting point, here's where I want to go today, I'm just going to go for a walk, excellent. And then the next day, you're going to do some yoga. Excellent. And the next day, maybe you pick up some weights and you start with the two pounds. And then in a week, a month, a year, you might be picking up more weight. Actually, I guarantee you're going to be picking up more weight if you hang in there. So you're going to be able to look back and go, wow, I really made some progress. And when you stop, whether maybe something happened in your life, something came up, you changed jobs, you changed work, you had a loss, you got sick. Like me, I was looking at my weightlifting charts from actually everything that I've ever tracked. And I was looking back and I was like, wow, in 2018, I was killing it. I was lifting so heavy. I would love to get back there. So now I have this motivation to go, okay, I could deadlift 140 pounds. I want to get back there. I'm really far away from it right now. I'm still really weak, but... I know that that is my end goal, that I've done it before, I can do it again. And the same with you. You've done it before, you can do it again. And if this is something new, you're not the first person to have done this either. There is going to be a system, a program, a support system for you for whatever you're going through, whether it's weight, exercise, hormones, business, finances, investing, I don't care. There's always a system and finding the support that you need is going to be the most helpful for you. And don't forget that the more you practice your habits, the more that you engage in them, that you're creative with them, that you're tracking and you're in it and you're experiencing it, the easier it becomes. And then the easier it becomes to do every single day where it does become a habit. And then you always have that groundwork. So if you need to take some time off, then you're going to be able to step right back in and know exactly what to do and how to do that. Um, and same with like eating sugar, right? I have this conversation a lot. When people quit sugar, it's really, really hard for that first week, sometimes even longer. And then it just becomes easier and easier. And all of a sudden you're not craving sugar as much anymore. And then you can go without it. So know that there's going to be some good days, some bad days, and it does get easier. So Thank you so much for being here. If you are looking for personalized help, you're looking for that support team for your health, I always offer a free health assessment for you to chat with me about your goals, your symptoms, your needs. We can plan out testing what would make sense for you and get you going so you are supported and you have a plan to work with. So thank you so much for being here. If you have any questions, let me know and we'll see you next time.